Hi, I'm Mary Popham with Imagineer Systems, and we're here with Freddie Wong from Rocket Jump Studios. They've done some amazing work. Um, what they mostly do is they, uh, they work on really fast turnaround, lightweight projects with high-end visual effects on a budget. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that works, what it looks like, and uh, what their production process looks like, right? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Freddie Wong. Uh, I am a co-founder of a company called Rocket Jump uh, here in Burbank. And what we do is online short videos, online web series. Uh, we've been doing things on YouTube for the last few years, uh, since like 2010. Uh, we have done uh, long form uh, web series. Uh, Video Game High School is sort of our flagship series. Uh, we're two seasons into it. The second season was six episodes, and each episode being uh, 30 minutes long, so it's basically a TV show. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we have post production services, visual effects. We're kind of known for short, visual effects y driven action movies online and that's kind of what we've uh, built our company on. The one thing that we always kind of strive for is, is speed and efficiency and you know be having a very integrated tight workflow uh, and you know software integration like so what Mocha has with After Effects is very helpful in order to be able to turn around things at the volume and at the pace that we do. We've used the entire sort of Mocha line of products in terms of their integration with uh, After Effects on a number of projects uh, most recently of course Video Game High School there's a lot of screen tracking there's a lot of planar tracking that we needed to do for all the monitors and all these sort of real life monitor stands we basically just had pieces of dark plexiglass that we would go in later and track on whatever the screen graphics were. For Big in High School uh, Season 2, we shot high frame rate for the action scenes, which is kind of like uh, uh, what Peter Jackson did for The Hobbit, and we needed the uh, Mocha Pro in order to do uh, some of the planner tracking at 48 frames a second. I think we're probably one of the only people other than Peter Jackson to use that feature in the program, but uh, yeah, we've used sort of the whole line of Mocha products for a variety of tracking situations whenever, whenever we had a situation where, you know, sort of 2D point tracking didn't make sense and 3D tracking was too time consuming, uh, Mocha stepped in and did a lot of that work for us. So the Mocha integration with After Effects is really easy. It's, um, despite, you know, sort of being a separate program, the translation between Mocha data and, and into After Effects is like, just like, it, it happens instantaneously. It's all super smoothed out at this point. It was uh, very useful because a lot of times you'll be seeing After Effects and you're kind of getting your workflow and you're like, oh, okay, I want to I want to do this. And it's like, ah, but point tracker's not really cutting it. And, and to be honest, uh, Adobe's 3D tracker takes forever to do this, to do things that's really finicky. So Video Game High School, we have a character called Shoppa who's literally a robot, and this is like one of the prop masks that we made for it. But you notice, uh, so that we had, so the idea is to sort of give expression to it as we had it eyebrows uh, right. here. Um, and so the character, you know, so our, our actor doing it would be, you know, bouncing it around, looking up and down, left and right. Um, and the way that we did that was just, it was literally a mocha planar track on this plane and this plane. You'll notice that they're kind of offset and angle. Sure. So one and two, left eyebrow, right eyebrow. And that was every single shot. We probably had like, 50, 60 shots of, uh, of eyebrows that we would just track in and then animate him doing all kinds of ridiculous things with that. And that was the way we got expression into a inanimate robot character. The more knowledge you have of your tool sets and also specifically the underlying principles that the tool sets use, the better off you are when it comes to the post-production side because you're prepping for that. Uh, in the production side of things. Mocha in particular is one that it takes a little bit of time to kind of wrap your head around because it's very, you know, 2 ds easily understood, 3 ds easily understood, as in we, you know, live in that every day. But when you talk about planar tracking, the idea of like looking at things as surfaces and planes, it, uh, it, it, it changes sort of the way that you approach uh, a lot of visual effects shots. Once you understand that, then it's just things, there's there's so many things where you're like, yeah, there's getting, we're getting plenty of data off of this screen. And it's like, it's so weird to me because like, I will still go to shoot sometimes and everyone's taping putting tape marks up on monitors like you do you haven't had you don't have to do that at all like we'd, we'd rather have the reflection off of this this is great guys portal gun i ordered finally came in the mail yep sounds like fun hey guys check this out this is so cool guys a phone ringing Character reaches down with his hand, picks up the phone, and holds it up, and it's, you know, someone's calling him. Um, and you would think it'd be a very easy shot, but it's kind of tight, and the, the phone kind of rotates a little bit, and he occludes it with his fingers as he grabs it, and, and as he goes in to grab it initially, so you lose a lot of tracking data, and just, I think, four of our visual effects artists just all took a pass at it. One guy used Nuke, one guy tried using PF Track and had just no luck with it. Nothing uh, on that one. Everyone's like, you can't do this, we gotta, we gotta reshoot this, we gotta just, it's an easy insert. I'm like, well, let me give it a shot. So with Mocha, what the, the key was with that was, um, I, I tracked basically 
the this part of the phone mm -hmm. and then the edges around it. So everywhere, he, so if he was holding like this, it was tracked to the edge of his thumb, the ear hole, the the home button, and then just around the edges of the screen there, and totally worked. Totally worked on the first shot. But it was one of those things where it's like it was very clearly highlighted how if you understand sort of what Mocha is doing, you know, I think because they, they had tried Mocha, but what they were doing is they were tracking the wrong pieces of it. They were tracking bits that had reflectivity and was throwing it off. But it's like no, if you understand what it's trying to do. Uh, you can do stuff that you would think would be impossible. In my experience with Mocha and planner tracking, it's it's one of those tools that it's surprising how often you reach back into the tool chest for it uh, because of its speed, because of versatility. And a lot of times, like, it'll get you to that point where you don't necessarily, you, know, you can really over-engineer shots sometimes. And I see people do this all the time, especially with like 3D tracking, where it's like, yeah, I've modeled this entire environment, it's perfect to this point, and it's, you know, you could you could put anything on this in this environment now and it'll lock onto it. And it's like, well, but we, we're not putting anything on it. We just need to put this screen in, or we just need to add this, or we just need to put a poster on the wall, or whatever it, you're trying to accomplish. You don't need to do more work than you have to, because if you're doing that, you're wasting time in post-production. Time is everything uh, when it comes to uh, film production. So. For us, you know, uh, the use of Mocha has been really helpful uh, and and really instrumental in in allowing us to be quick and to be able to turn around the kind of volume and quality work that we do on a week by week basis. Make some noise. If you're a fan of like visual effects and action movies and just. Uh, Generally having a good time on the internet, check out our sites, rocketjump.com, and check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash rocketjump.